everyone. I'm going to be telling you about the human eye and compare it with CCDs, which are, hello PowerPoint, which are devices. Um, they are going to, they are used in most of the modern telescopes, really. They are devices where you can capture and record images, even at different wavelengths. So, human eye. The human eye is not very sensitive to light. And this is already in general. Uh, compared with a photographic film, is not very sensitive. Comparing with a CCD, is even less sensitive. Okay, so our human eye um, acts a little bit like the telescope, right? It collects all the right light rays, and then it passes. Our eyes are really lens, so when the light rays pass through the lens, they will focus on a point. If um, the lens is good enough or if we actually have a normal eye so with no problems whatsoever it will focus right at the back of the eye and then we don't need to use any extra lenses if that doesn't happen then we need to use glasses they are going to make that either the focal point is closer or further away from um, from where it was so from the back of the retina depending on what the problem was okay so that's on our human eye and it works a little bit like a telescope again, because what is going to happen is the human eye is going to collect all the light, like a telescope, and then depending on the diameter of the place where the light comes in, you can get more or less light. Now, our diameter is going to be measured by the pupil, so the pupil size can change, can increase or decrease. Actually, the iris, which is the part with the color, is the one that decreases or increases, making the pupil to be bigger or smaller, collecting more light or less light, okay? That's why when you are in a light room, your pupil is quite small, so the dark part of your eyes, and then if you are in a dark room, then the pupil is going to get bigger. So that's the human eye. Now, we have CCDs. This stands for charge coupled devices. They are basically in every single modern telescope, okay? So, I obtain images and instead of being me looking through a lens, I'm going to have the images going straight on the computer uh, where I can then, you know, photograph them or pass them into a photographic film or change something about the image, okay? So, now, these CCDs, they have a much higher quantum efficiency than a photographic film, and therefore, they are going to have a higher quantum efficiency than the human eye. I'll go to this quantum efficiency in a second, okay? And they are more sensitive to light, and they can be used to record changes of an image as well. So, if we would just use the human, human eye, we would have to kind of rely on our memories, and the CCD can just record the image. Great. Now, there are more advantages to this on the CCDs. So they are sensitive to a wider range of wavelengths than the human eye. So the CCDs, CCDs, sorry, they typically go from ultraviolet, so about 100 nanometers, to the infrared, which is about 100, uh, 1,100 nanometers, okay? nanometer is 10 to the power of minus 9 meters and the human eye uh, only captures the visible light so it goes from 350 nanometers to 650 nanometers so that's another advantage they also have, have a very constant quantum efficiency across the visible light range of wavelengths unlike the eye in a photographic film uh, so they will the eye in the photographic film will uh, be more sensitive to certain wavelengths than others. For example, us, as I said in a lesson, us, the human eye, we capture the red quite well. That's why we have the reds in any warning signs. So, you know, for um, people to stop crossing in a crossing or for cars to stop, they use the red in the stop signs or, um, you know, careful roads works ahead or any of these things. They normally use red because that's the... Um, wavelength that our eyes will capture um, more easily, okay? So that's what we are more sensitive to. Um, depending on the type of animal, they will have different ones, okay? So as I said in the lesson as well, birds are quite good in capturing the green light because, you know, most of the food that they have is around green, so that's where they go. Um, what else? Oh, the CCD, uh, CCDs, they work well at low temperatures, such as those encountered in high altitudes or in space. And this is good because at high altitude and in space is where I'm going to have many of the telescopes. So the CCDs, they work well as uh, there as well, okay? 
Now, very briefly, I'll just tell you how the CCD works. This is actually not part of an exam in case you're taking this exam, but it may be part of your curiosity. So here we go. So. The CCD uses the photoelectric effect. Go on my quantum phenomena chapter lessons, okay? Uh, to record Im an image of a, seri of a series of charges, electrons, correspond to an intensity of light falling into the pixels. Here they are. So let's look how this actually works. So I get light rays going onto the CCD, right? This makes the electrons to uh, well, it causes a photoelectric effect, so the electrons leave the surface and they are released into the potential well. Now, over 70% of the photons are going to cause an electron to be released, so that means that the quantum efficiency is over 70%. So now you're guessing what this is standing for, okay? Uh, I'll have another slide on that anyway. Then, once the picture has been taken, the electrons, they are all stored in one potential wells underneath the components, so underneath the pixels, okay? And now they need to be counted in order to record an image data. So this is going to be giving a certain part of the image, and this one gives another part of the image, and the last one another part of the image. All together, they will form a bigger image with a, be with a better quality. Now, that's the part that it gets a little bit harder. So I can actually change the voltage in between the pixels. So I change the gate voltages, okay? And I can do this to get the electron to go from one to the next well, okay? So from one to another pixel. Um, and this, again, can be used to actually improve the quality of my image. And once they get there, I, um, they are going to be measured, installed, uh, stored as a number in a computer. So I can go from this one, I study this one, get the electrons here, study this one, get the electrons here, study this image, okay? And then the series of the numbers can be used to reconstruct the original image. Colors then can be, they can be recorded using separate three CCDs with the three primary colors and all the others just come from it. And this is how the image looks. Now, this is a very pixelized image, right? So if I want to have a better quality, I can have more pixels. Each of them is going to give me a certain amount of detail. And again, the smaller the pixels or the larger the number of pixels overall, the better the quality of my image because I will be able to show a detail. Now, moving on, what is, if I can move on, hello computer, computer, it's not working. It will go there eventually. Uh-oh. Hello? I'm panicking now. I don't know what is going on. Okay, I think... I know what I'm going to do. Look how smart I am. Okay, here we go. So, quantum efficiency. So, by definition, is um, the percentage of incident photons that liberate an electron. This is actually definition quite for pixels because, you know, in our eyes this is not really what is going on. But basically, if you want to say general, generally, is the percentage of photons that will actually contribute to an image to be constructed, okay? In a CCD, uh, it is at least 70% and can go as high as 90% at certain wavelengths, so that's brilliant. In a photographic film, if you want to have an idea and make a comparison, is about 4%. Our eyes is um, or have a quantum efficiency of about 1% to 2%. And this is according to the scientists. I actually had to go and research outside the area. This is not quite my area, but according to the papers that I saw, this is the quantum efficiency for the human eye, okay? So the CCDs. This, the, not only have a higher quantum efficiency, they are also 20 times more sensitive to light than a photographic film. So CCDs are quite useful. Hopefully you know that now uh, from this video, you can compare it to the human eye in a photographic film and you can say why all these advantages are going to contribute to better images in telescopes. Okay, so that's all for now on the CCD, CCD stuff. And I'll go back to you in just in a minute to get another video on kind of a recap of everything that we said so far. Bye!